Just a side note about Mom and Style. Mom was always ahead of it when it came to fashion and so often noted as classy. It wasn't that Mom had a lot of clothes, but what she wore, it was done with distinction and great care. Now back to work and style. When Aaron was about eight years old, he wanted to get a job and saw an ad in the Schomburg paper for an office cleaning job. However, however he knew he couldn't get the job based on his age, so Mom was recruited to apply in his stead. As in, an interview was set up with Mr. Backley, and since my mom couldn't drive, she had to walk to the building on Highway 27. I think it's about a kilometer away. Mom dressed up in her best clothes, including her Sunday clothes and high heels, walked on the gravel on the side of the highway, and was interviewed. Needless to say, Mom got the job, and this cleaning job has been in the Vanderveen family for 37 years now, with Justin and Wendy currently doing it. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carl says that Mom was dedicated to helping him clean a bank and beaten, never a sigh, and done will it so willingly. Mom was always there for family and friends, and later in life, we could be there for her. About seven years ago, Mom uh, went completely deaf, which was a very difficult providence for her. As Mom was a very social person, communication changed, and Mom got very proficient with the computer, with emailing, and we all got very good at typing. We also signed up Mom for Facebook, which was a means of Mom keeping up with people. We did discover soon enough that Mom would like to follow us, which had its pros and cons. <laughs> Yes, she could keep connected with the social world out there, but it also raised a lot of discussions as we would have to explain our thoughts, comings and goings, whatever we posted. I had to laugh last night when I saw the Facebook post that I had did of Mom and noticed that there were 164 comments and 162 likes. When Mom would follow a certain post, she would take note of the likes, who liked it and read every comment. Mom sure would have been spending a lot of time reading all those comments and studying the names now. Mom loved getting emails from families and friends, and one of the highlights of her day was reading the emails from Teeny. As a family, Teeny, we'd like to thank you from our hearts for so faithfully writing Mom every day, keeping her in the loop, sending her pictures of interest, and keeping her life somewhat normal. I would come in the morning, the first thing I would have to do was log into her iPad and read your email amongst any others that came overnight. In the last month or so, you gave much delight to Mom as she, uh, she became your accountability partner on your diet. She would faithfully, you would faithfully send her pictures of food you ate and the numbers on the scale. Just so Mom could keep track of those numbers, she wrote them on her calendar. And yes, she took her task seriously. You were a faithful friend, Tini, who served her in this practical way, sweet, loving, and always encouraging her in her daily walk with the Lord. Thank you. In the last couple of months, Mom's health declined, and there were times of some anxiousness, especially being deaf with the world seemingly felt smaller. As Carl noted, Mom loved the Lord and was always questioning if her life reflected that, and so she continually sought to draw her strength and comfort from His Word relying on his promises of being with her at all times. We are thankful to God for Mom's godly example to us, how she loved us all unconditionally, how she served us sacrificially. We were truly blessed. We love you, Mom, and we will miss you. Well, I'm just going to say something. Okay. One of the things that I was uh, thinking about, and Rachel mentioned it to me this morning, uh, we had uh, we had to take quite a few visits to the emergency room with uh, with Paca at the time when, when uh, they were living in Bolton. And uh, one of the times it was two in the morning, and we were coming back to the to the uh, to the apartment, and uh, Paca was still determined at that time to show that the Parkinson's wasn't going to get the better of him. So instead of just walking up the stairs, he was going to kind of like leap two steps at a time. The, the thing was, Mom was hooked into his arm, and Francie was hooked into Mom's arm, and I was hooked into Aunt Francie's arm. So as Pac is taking his big leap, he misses a step, he goes crumpling down in the heap, he pulls Mom down or into the into the heap, and then Aunt Francie or Mom goes 
down into them, and I'm on top of them all. <laughs> and at two in the morning, mom's so worried. Yeah, it's on camera. They're just coming <laughs> back from a party, and we're, and we're drunk and this and that. And, but it was just so funny how Dad was still determined to show that Parkinson's was not going to get the better of him. And there we are, and a couple of people at two in the morning. Um, yeah, so. So many people have, have played a, a role in the care for uh, for dad and for mom. You know, the grandkids, all the grandkids visiting, uh, the siblings, uh, you know, Aaron, myself, Audrey, visiting. But uh, and we need to especially thank Liz for how much time she invested into their care, into their, all the appointments that they had to go to. Um, so many, yeah, so many doctor's appointments, hairdresser appointments, uh, going to the pharmacy. So much time that is invested into their lives, and we, I know you did it willingly, but we, we do need to thank you as well. Psalm 103 and then Revelation 12. So, whoever would like to read that passage. This is uh, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to, to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of the word of his word. Bless the Lord, all you all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. 
And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This time we will uh, come again and bless of assurance. We'll sing these two verses. <laughs> 